Oh, uh, hey there. I just noticed you from across the room and thought, you know, do you, maybe it's, have you ever had, do you want some tech? <laughs> maybe? The USB Implementers Forum has released the full specifications for USB 4 version 2, that wonderfully named thing that we all love, on the same day that Intel announced details about the next Thunderbolt spec. That's awkward. Consider it. <laughs> Actually, not really. Intel's Thunderbolt 5, or whatever they're gonna call it since they didn't say, uses USB-C as its connector. So they probably planned this in their secret clubhouse for connector standards. No lightning allowed. Cooties. According to the new specs, some USB 4 V2 ports could be able to reach one-way transmission speeds of 120 gigabits per second to a high resolution monitor, while every port built with maybe Thunderbolt 5, will support that speed every time, no matter what, neither rain, nor sleet, nor etc. In addition, Intel threw a rain cloud at USB IF regarding their naming scheme for USB O, with exec Jason Ziller calling the USB naming scheme very confusing. Drama! Ah, that's a thunder clap right there. While Intel hasn't released a new name for the spec yet, and it seems like they want it to not be confusing, with the way things have been going recently, I wouldn't put anything past these people. Introducing Thunderbolt 7. No, what? Apple has made some new announcements about its iPad lineup. Both the 11 and 12.9 inch iPad Pro models are getting a tasty silicon upgrade in the form of a M2 processor, as well as Wi-Fi 6E support. Apple also announced a new 10th gen iPad, priced from 449 to 749, depending on storage and connectivity options. But you know that second generation Apple Pencil that you love? Just go ahead and throw it away. It won't work with the new iPad for some reason. The first generation pen will though. You remember that one, right? Oh, thank God. The one that had to stick out of the iPad's lightning port in order to charge like an incredibly breakable finger? Don't worry, they fixed that problem because the iPad no longer has a lightning port. It has a USB-C port. Oh. What? Hold on, they fixed that too. For just nine extra dollars, you can get a lightning to USB-C adapter that will let you plug in your last gen pencil so it can charge and flop around like a big, awkward, flip, flippy, floppy thing. I don't know, use your imagination. Sandal? Okay, or hear me out, you can buy the Logitech Crayon for iPad that's $30 cheaper and has a USB-C charging port, but that's crazy talk. Google is deciding to focus more on its own hardware rather than non-Google devices. I guess we all deserve a little me time, you know, for self, Reflection. I love bubble baths. That's what this whole show is. Or maybe, in Google's case, it's a response to a potential multi-billion dollar loss. Apple's US market share hit an all-time high last month, while Samsung, Google's largest Android partner, is in decline in many markets. So Google is afraid their long-standing deal with Apple to put Google search on iPhones could be kiboshed by regulators, which would kill their ad revenue generated from iPhone users. In response, Google plans to invest less in developing its Google Assistant voice assisted search for cars and for devices not made by Google, including TVs, headphones, smart home speakers, smart glasses, and smartwatches that use Google's Wear OS software. So wait, Google is going to abandon supporting partners in favor of bolstering their own ecosystem? No, you were the chosen one. You were supposed to destroy Tim Apple, not join him. Who are we kidding? They're both Palpatine. I see through the lies of the Jedi. <laughs> Now it's time for Quick Bits, brought to you by Brilliant, the hands-on, interactive way to learn STEM topics. But how do you go hands-on with abstract constructs that only truly exist on the mental plane? The answer is Brilliant, the pineal gland of learning. They've got thousands of courses with new topics to explore each month, like computer science fundamentals. Use Brilliant to augment your college education or just use it to get smart, because understanding even just the basics can help you troubleshoot all kinds of problems. But if you need another reason, the first 200 people to head to brilliant.org slash techlinked will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So go on, get smart. Whoa, these quick bits are giving me a quick fit. <laughs> ah! Microsoft is building its own mobile gaming store to compete with Apple and Google in the event that its acquisition of Activision Blizzard King goes through. Because once you own Call of Duty and Candy Crush, what, you're just gonna let people play those games through another software distribution monopoly when you can make your own? I wouldn't do that. I guess Microsoft has doubled down for Team Epic in their battle to allow third-party app stores on iOS. Meanwhile, in unrelated news, hundreds of Microsoft staff have been laid off after an evaluation of the company's business priorities. They weren't playing enough Candy Crush at work. How could they have let this happen? You're out. 
Netflix is seriously exploring having its own cloud gaming platform. The company stated this the same day they announced it had 55 more games in development. Wow. Netflix believes it would be successful as a value add to its already existing business model, bringing the service to TVs and PCs. This is much different from the ill-fated Stadia's business model, which was, oh wait, we're still, we're still doing that? I thought I told you to shut it down. It was a prank. April 1st was months ago. <laughs> MSI did an oopsie when they raised the price of their liquid cooled 4090 by 185 US dollars less than a week after its launch. Naturally, this led to a Reddit revolt, leading to MSI doing the honorable thing and unlaunching the price hike, offering refunds to anyone who bought the card at the eye-watering price of $1,935. Whew. The MSI store thankfully now reflects the much more reasonable $1,750 price tag. A card for the middle class. A GPU for the everyman. A card for every rich person. Amazon is now selling home insurance in the UK. Finally, the same company that sells your doorbell and your smart speakers and your security cameras and your robot vacuum and your furniture can set you up with nice comfy protection for your home itself. You better be straight with your corporate overlords though, because Alexa will know if the fire wasn't an accident. She's watching. She's always watching. Finally, Meta announced they have used AI to develop translation between English and non-written languages. Yeah, nearly half of the 7,000 or so currently spoken languages in the world don't have written components making translation, yep, it was pretty difficult. However, Meta was able to develop AI software to translate Hakeen, a primarily oral language, to English. With this revolutionary development, Mark Zuckerberg can now ask millions of new people to please try Horizon Worlds. And I'd like to ask you to come back on Friday for more tech news, delivered as always by a real person with legs. What do you, what do you mean, what, it, they're, they're there.